Okay, so then we're continuing. This is a continuation of section 1.1. 1 .1. So section, <coughs> not at 1.1, 11.1. So continued. Okay, so what we were talking about previously <coughs> is we had taken uh, some vectors and I had said, well, let's multiply some vectors by numbers. So, for example, if I take a vector and I multiply it by a number which is greater than 1, if you were to draw the vector before and after multiplication by this scalar which is greater than 1, the new vector would, would be have what physical relation to the old vector? It would be bigger, right? Longer. Right? It would be longer. So then if you multiply a vector by a number that's strictly greater than 1, it will be longer. What if you multiply a vector by 1? What will happen to it? Its length. Nothing, right? It'll be the same. Okay, what if you multiply a vector by a number which is between 0 and 1, but not 0? It will shrink, right? Its length will shrink. What, if, what do you get? What will happen if you multiply a vector by 0? It will, be, it will now be the 0 vector because it will have length 0, and there is exactly one vector that has length 0. There are no others. Okay, what will happen if you multiply a vector by a negative quantity? it will change its direction, right? It will change its direction. So then, <coughs> that is to say it will be pointing, if you were to draw it on the plane, it would be pointing in 180 degrees the opposite direction. Okay, so then now, if you multiply by, for example, negative 3. If you multiply by negative 3, then the length of the vector will be three times as long, and it will be pointing in the opposite direction. Okay, so then, is everybody okay with all of these kinds of things. That's what we talked about at the end last time. Okay, so then generally, generally this thing is called, this kind of thing is called scaling. My handwriting is bad today, isn't it? Okay, so then, <coughs> if we are given, given a vector v, and we'll just, for now, be in two dimensions, in coordinates it's a b and a scalar c so what does it mean by scalar yes a number right so then now we need to be specific right because in calculus one typically we say you're given this object or that object or whatever and the objects were always numbers, right? So then given of x, given x, or given y. In calculus one, those were always scalars. But now, now we need to be a little bit more specific because in calculus two, we might be talking about vectors. So now we're given two things, a vector and a scalar. Okay, <coughs> now, CV is also a vector. So CV like this is equal to, well, just as a textual substitution, this is C and then V, and all I did was replace V with what I said it was. Okay, now I want to distribute the C into the vector, right? It's outside of the delimiting angle brackets. Now I want to put it inside. How does it get inside? Distribute it to both of them. Good. So then C A, C B, like so. Okay, so then I think we probably said that last time. So then now, <coughs> Let's see what happens uh, to the length of the vector. So then this is one observation. Ano another observation is this. How about, first, let's recall the length of a vector. Right, we said this last time for a two-dimensional vector. This will be the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's just a fact that I'm writing down. Okay, and that should be a fact that you're comfortable with. Now, Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if we compute the length of CV. Like so. Okay, well this will be this will be the length of CA CB. The length of CA CB. <coughs> okay, well that that should be the square root of c squared a squared plus c squared 
b squared. Okay, now there's a common factor of c squared in there, so I can factor it out and say that that is the square root of c squared times a squared plus b squared, and then using the rules of square roots, I can say that this is the product of two different square roots, the square root of c squared multiplied by the square root of a squared plus b squared. And now I'm going to make a mistake, and this is a very common mistake that I see all of the time, but it is nevertheless a mistake. c multiplied by a squared plus b squared. Wrong. Why is this wrong? It's the absolute value of c. Okay, I don't care how many times in high school your teacher told you that the square root of x squared was plus or minus x or was x or whatever. It's not. The square root of x squared or the square root of c squared or whatever symbol, the name of the symbol you're using is the absolute value. Absolute value. Okay. So, that's interesting. But I want to make one more observation. I want to make one more observation because because now I can say that this is the absolute value of c multiplied by something else. I know another name for this term. What's another name for the square root of a squared plus b squared in this context? I heard it. Someone started to say it. The length, right? It's the length of v, right? Multiplied by the length of v. But that's what we just got finished saying just a couple minutes ago, right? If I take a vector and I multiply it by 3, <coughs> then the length of the new vector should be three times the length of the previous vector. That's what this is saying. Is I took v, multiplied it by c, and the length of the new thing is the, link, is the magnitude of c multiplied by v. Right? So if you multiply a vector by negative 5, the resulting vector is pointing in the opposite direction, and its length is five times the length of the previous vector. Okay, so any question about this uh, computation here? Okay, so then now I'd like to point something out that's just a little bit strange, and I'd, I'd like for you to have a sense that it's strange. Now, right here, right, this computation, c times v, this is a combination of two objects which are of two different categories, right? The category of c is that it is a scalar, and the category of v is that it is a vector, right? This is, this is a, a combination of things of two different categories, and that's odd, right? Because normally we're dealing with things of the same category, right? The sum of two numbers the sum of two vectors, the combination of two cats, right? It's strange when you have combinations of things of, of differing categories. So notice, category of C is scalar, category of V is vector. What kind of thing is the result? A vector, right? So it's sort of like the scalar C got an upgrade, right? In this combination, somehow it upgraded from scalar to vector. So you need to keep track of these things, right, when things switch categories like this. It's very important. So any question about this? <coughs> any question about this? Okay, very good. So then, now the next thing I want to talk about is the graphical, graphical summation. of vectors. So then previously, previously ta we talked about the coordinate summation of vectors. That is to say, if I had two vectors and I gave coordinates for both of them, right, so for example, this is one thing that we said, something like this previously. If I give you a vector 1, 2, and another vector v is something else wonderful, like negative 3, uh, 7, then you can add them up like this, so u plus v. So what do you think it should be in the first coordinate? Negative 2, right? And then in the, se in the second coordinate, 9, right? So then that's obtained, that's obtained by taking the first coordinate, 1 plus negative 3, and in the second coordinate, 2 plus 7. Okay, so u plus v. So this is, this is not graphical, right? This is with coordinates. So what does this have to do with uh, a visual representation? Okay, so then now we're going to see that. <coughs> All right. 
So I'm going to take two vectors, u and v, and I'm going to assume that they lie in the first quadrant. Okay, because if they didn't, then I could just rotate the coordinate system somehow so that they do uh, fall in the first quadrant. Okay, so here's a vector, one vector, and here's another vector. Okay, so I'll call this blue one V, and I'll call the red one U. So now I want to add two vectors, but we don't have any coordinates for these, so it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with coordinates now. So graphically, what is, it, what is it that I do if I want to add U to V? That is to say, I, I want to compute this particular product. I will, or sum, I mean to say. I want to compute u plus v. So what does it mean in this case to do this? So this is something that if you've seen vectors before, they talked about in high school and has to do with... You draw another one, yeah? So maybe you have more? Right, okay. So then... So then remember the names that we have for these, right? You can call, you can call the pointy part the head and the, and, the, and the other part the tail, or you can call them the, this here, the tail, the initial point, and this the terminal point, whatever you want. Okay, so then to do this sum u plus v, what you're going to do is you're going to make a copy of v, translate it so that the initial point of v falls at the terminal point of u, and then, and then draw it. So then something like this. I'm going to try it. Oh, wait. Like this. This one. Okay, now, these are supposed to be exactly the same. If they're not, that's just the, the strength of my artistry failing. Okay? So then now, this, this, is another copy of V. Right, and this is sort of an abuse here because, strictly speaking, a vector, a vector is supposed to be such that its, ter its initial point is where? At the origin. But as V is drawn, it's not really a vector in the strictest sense. Really, it's a what? Starts with a D. A directed line segment. It's a directed line segment. Uh, and it's not in standard position. But we're, gonna, we're just going to continue with this abuse because it's entirely standard to call this thing a vector. Okay, so then I did that. I, copy, I made a copy of V. I translated it so that the initial point of V falls on the terminal point of U. I did that. But what does U plus V have to do with any of that? That's my question for you. For the crowd, right? Not for the vector U. <laughs> Right, so then the resulting vector is from the initial point of u, from the initial point of u to the terminal point of the copied v. That is to say, from here to here. Right, that is u plus v. Okay, so this thing is u plus v. Okay, now, I did u and then plus v. Now, someone tell me some other strategy I could have I used to get that same uh, green vector. v plus u, right? So then notice, w well, what I did is I said, okay, I'm going to make a copy of the blue one, translate it in this way that we said, and then append it to the red one. But was there something special about choosing the blue one? No, there was nothing special about choosing the blue one. There was nothing special about it. I could have just as well taken the red one, made a copy of it, and translated it over here and done this. I keep forgetting to do that. Okay, so then now this also looks like this. So then, what does that mean? That not only is the green vector u plus v, it is also v plus u, right? It is also v plus u, okay? And this is a coordinate-free argument for 
the, the conclusion that u plus v is v plus u. Right, so then now, u and v, the category of u and v is vectors, right? They're vectors. Okay, so then if I do u plus v, the result is another vector. If I do v plus u, the result is another vector. So that's, that's good. That's the kind of combinations we like. The category of both arguments, u and v, is vector, and the category of the result is vector, so we like that. Now, furthermore, apparently for this operation, it doesn't matter what order we do it in, and therefore this operation of summation has a certain property associated with it. That property starts with C, commutative, right? This commutes. We like this, right? It doesn't matter if you do u plus v or v plus u, right? You know, this, this is a really simplifying thing about the algebra of vectors, okay? But not all, th not all operations have this property, right? So sometimes the order really does matter, right? So, for example, in an example of where the order matters, right, is you could do underwear and then pants, and that you will get one result. Or you could do pants and then underwear, and that is a different result. And they are emphatically not the same. Right. However, u plus v and v plus u, they are the same. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, so then the last thing I'd like to say is this shape, ignoring this green thing in the middle and taking into account the limits of my artistic skill, this is a quadrilateral, right? That's a quadrilateral. And specifically, what type of quadrilateral is it? A parallelogram. gram. Okay, and that's very important. So any question about this? Okay, now I'm just going to do one I'm going to do one more thing, but it's going to be s significantly quicker. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to <coughs> draw another axis. Uh, except I'm going to draw it in the middle of the page. Okay, and I'm going to draw two vectors again. Okay, so I'll make that one that, that way. So then this one will be u, and this one will be v. Right, so then I could, if I wanted, I could finish the parallelogram and demonstrate u plus v just like on the thing that's right above, right? Okay, but I'm not going to do that. So now what I want you to do is I want you to consider what happens, what happens if you compute, if you compute u uh, minus v. u minus v. Okay, so then I want you to think about this. So then my hint to you is this, is that u minus v the definition, its meaning, is that it is u plus negative v. Okay, so please draw what is happening here. Okay, so then the first thing I'm going to do, just in the interest of expediency now, is I'm going to draw negative v. So how does negative v appear with relation to v? Right, it's just pointing in, it's just pointing in the exact opposite direction. Okay, so then I'm just eyeballing it. It looks about like that to me. Okay, so then this will be, this will be <coughs> negative v. Okay, now what? Right, now I do the exact same thing. I want to do u, I want to do u, and then plus uh, negative v. Should I do u plus negative v or negative v plus u? Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter, okay. So then I will just try it like this. I'll take I'll take a copy of the red vector u and then attach its initial point to the terminal point of v 
am within the limits of my artistic ability. Okay, so I don't know. What do you think? Like that? About like that, maybe. Maybe more like that. <laughs> we'll do this by democracy. Okay, so then now, <coughs> then I could take this if I wanted to. Right, and then you can see there's a <laughs> parallelogram, more or less. <laughs> So this can, again, be negative V. Okay, now, I did it, but what is U, where is, is U plus negative V indicated on my drawing right now? No, it's not. So where is it? Where is it? That's correct. From the origin to here, right? This part, this, that I just, the green part that I just drew is the resulting vector U plus negative V. So then that's u plus negative v. Okay, but a standard thing to do is actually not to draw it right there. A more standard thing to do is to do the following kind of thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw that, draw the parallelogram. <coughs> blue. Okay, so then right here, red. So this parallelogram that I just drew would be if I did u plus v instead of u plus negative v. Now I can translate the green vector to over here like this. Okay, so then now this, this is u plus, u plus negative v. <coughs> so that's interesting. That's interesting because this is one of, the, one of the diagonals of that parallelogram, right? It's u minus v. That's what, this, that's what this diagonal is. What is the other diagonal? u plus v, right? So that's interesting, geometrically speaking. This parallelogram, right, the main, the, the diagonal, this, the, let's see, orange diagonal here that I'm going to draw, the orange one, is u plus v, right? And the other one is u minus v. Okay, so any question about this? <coughs> okay, the fact that these are, that this parallel, parallelogram identity works, okay, is very important. Okay, you need to geometrically understand these things. So any question about this? Well, it's just, so, the human condition and mathematics included in there, because by mathematics I mean mathematics as it's done by humans, is full of abuses. So this is a standard abuse. Okay, so then, <coughs> wonderful. Other questions? Okay, good. So I'm going to save this. Okay. <coughs> so now, just to make sure that we can do some computation. So for example, for example, I want you to consider this vector, these vectors. U is how about 1, 3, and another vector V is negative 4, 8. I want you to find a unit, unit vector in the direction of mm, some combination of these. How about u minus v? Unit vector in the direction of u minus v. What is it that's being requested? You know, computationally. So, I mean, one thing that helps is that currently the name, this thing doesn't have a name, U minus V. So I'm just going to write, for my own help, I'm going to give it a name. 
I'll say w is u minus v, just so, it, just so the thing that I'm talking about has a name. So <coughs> now, u minus v, so what goes in the first coordinate? 5, okay, and what goes in the second coordinate? Negative 5? Okay, well that was, a, that was a bad coincidence, but it happens sometimes. I wish they weren't <laughs> 5 and negative 5, but it just happens. Okay, now, is this, is this already a unit vector? Probably not, right? Probably not. Okay, so then let's compute its length to determine that. So what is the length? The square root of 50, good. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a perfectly acceptable number, right? You don't need to use your calculator and blah, 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 and do kinds, all kinds of mental gymnastics and say something like 5 square root 2, right? You could do that. There's no problem with doing that. But if you come by and say that it's 5 square root of 3, you will be wrong. So I encourage you not to do that kind of thing. Just leave it as the square root of 50. Okay, so then, is the squared, how can I tell now conclusively that this is not a unit vector? It's not equal to 1, right? A unit vector means that it has length 1. So then how do I find a unit vector in the, that is in the direction of W, now that it has a name called W? Right, so it will be W over the length of W. Okay, so then in particular for this specific situation it will be 5 over the square root of 50 and then negative 5 over the square root of 50. Okay, now I'm not going to, but I could, I could check and make sure that this really is a unit vector. How? Compute its length and check that it, the length is 1. Okay, so then now a follow-up question I could say. This question was, this is a unit vector in the direction of u minus v, right, which we call w. How can I find a unit vector in the opposite direction of u minus v? Multiply this by negative 1, because if you want to find the opposite direction of a vector, that is algebraically equivalent to multiplication by negative 1. Okay, now finally, every single vector right, has a unit vector which points in its direction except one vector. There is only one vector where you cannot find a unit vector pointing in its direction. And what vector is that? The zero vector, okay, because there's some, like, philosophical thing going on here, right? So then the zero vector, is it pointing in, is it pointing in no direction? Or is it pointing in all directions, right? So it's sort of like philosophical here. So then it doesn't have a direction, right? So then algebraically, algebraically, one of the reasons, one of the indications that this is the case is that you cannot perform this algebraic operation of division by length because that would amount to division by zero. Okay, so any questions about this example? <coughs> any questions? Okay, so then now, continuing this thing about vectors on the plane, so this is vectors on the plane and things about angles. <coughs> okay, so then now, if I draw an axis, okay, and a corresponding vector, <coughs> okay, now I'm going to, okay, so, okay, we'll do it like this. Here's a vector. <coughs> this vector doesn't have length 1. Okay, so then now, I'm going to draw, within the limits of my artistic ability, the unit circle. And that is just about as good as I'm able. Okay, so this is the unit circle. Now, <coughs> If I call the blue vector v, you should be able to tell me a conclusive reason why v is certainly not a unit vector. Because because its terminal point is not on the unit circle. So it evidently evidently does not have length 1. 
So more than that even, more than that even, maybe my scale is all messed up and everything like that, but you should still be able to tell me conclusively, it, it is not length one, we've established that. Is its length greater than one or less than one? It's greater than one. Why? Because it falls, its terminal point falls outside of the circle. Okay. So then now, <coughs> nevertheless, you can see that the vector, the vector does intersect the, the unit circle right here. Right, it intersects it right there. So then now, I'm going to draw another vector uh, on top of this one. On top of it. Okay, now this green vector... <coughs> I just got finished asking a question, a specific example, and I want someone to use the same phraseology that I just got finished in the last example. How is the green vector related to V? There it is. He said it, right? The green vector is the unit vector which is pointing in the direction of V, right? You algebraically, with the computation, did it on the previous page. Okay. I asked you to do that here. Find a unit vector in the direction of u minus v, but there was no picture associated with it. Now here I have asked you essentially the exact same question, except I didn't give you coordinates, I gave you a picture. I drew the, vec the blue vector v, and I gave you the unit circle, and I asked you to, c to tell me the unit vector which is pointing in the direction of v. It is the green vector. Now, on the same drawing, please, for me, c draw a unit vector which is pointing in the opposite direction of V. And this is not a trick question. It is probably exactly what you think. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? <laughs> draw. <laughs> Yes, so this one right here. So it's just, like, it's just like the green one, except it's pointing in the opposite direction. So that is a unit vector pointing in the opposite direction of V. Okay, now furthermore, because this is a circle, uh, because this is on the plane and there's a corresponding unit circle, what color do I like here? How about black will be fine. Okay, so then I can measure this angle, right, the angle that we usually measure in trigonometry, which is to say the angle between the vec the uh, the horizontal axis and the vector. Right, so that has an angle. So then, since this falls on the unit circle, you should be able to tell me the coordinates of this point right here in terms of the angle theta. So what are the coordinates of that specific point? Yes, the cosine of theta is the x coordinate, the first coordinate, and the second coordinate is the sine of theta. So that is a unit vector which is pointing in the direction of V. So then now, if I call this vector U, can I be certain that this vector has length 1? Hmm, let's check that. Let's check that. Because does U have length 1? Let's compute its magnitude. So this would be the square root of cosine of theta squared plus the sine of theta squared. And that should be something that you recognize. That's 1, right? Cosine squared plus sine squared is just a fancy way to write 1. So this is the square root of 1, which is, in particular, equal to 1. Okay, so then that's interesting. Any vector that has that form, cosine, to a vector of two components, the first component is the cosine of theta, the second component is the sine of theta, such a thing is always a unit vector, okay? And this drawing shows you that any unit vector can be written in that way. So that means that in two dimensions, every unit vector ad admits this kind of representation. You can write it as an angle. Now, V, we have already established that it is not a unit vector, but we can say symbolically that it has length, right? We always denote its length like this. So what I would like for you to see, what I would like for you to see is this, is that V, V, uh, over the length of V is equal to what? 
No, no, no. Not, it's not one, right? So then let's look at this expression. The numerator is a what category of thing? Vector, and the denominator is a scalar. So then vector divided by scalar is the same as vector multiplied by the inverse of a scalar. So what kind of object is this? A vector. Better be a vector. Okay, so then what is this vector? It's u, right? It's u. So then in particular, if I write it in coordinates, it's the cosine of theta, the sine of theta. So now I can take this, this equation right here and I can solve for v. V is equal to is equal to the length of V multiplied by this vector, the cosine of theta, the sine of theta. Okay, now why would I go through this whole this whole thing here to do this? Okay, that's because right, math these vectors and directed line segments and standard position and blah 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 blah, all these fancy names. Right, so then we're sort of being a little, really pretty formal with it. But in physics, like if you took physics in high school or whatever, they, they didn't say that a vector is an object that has multiple coordinates, and blah, 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 blah. They didn't say that. They said a vector is an object which has two properties. What were those two properties? Magnitude and direction. Now look at this factorization of B, of, of V, that is to say. Note how it is factored. What is this right here? This is the length. This is the length. And what is this part? This is the direction. Right, so any vector admits this factorization. You can factor it into a scalar and another vector which, ha which has length 1 and is pointing in the same direction as that vector. OK, that is to say almost every vector. Which vector does not admit such a factorization? Zero, right? Because you could say that the zero vector is zero multiplied by, well, by anything, right? Because zero multiplied by anything is still the zero vector. And that's the re one of the reasons why you might say that the zero vector is pointing in any direction you want, right? It's zero multiplied by anything. OK. So any question about this picture? So now, something that I could easily ask as a follow-up to this picture is something like this. I could say, um, well now I got to think about this for a second. Uh, okay, so then how about uh, W is equal to this? W is equal to <coughs> one and the square root of three, like that. Okay, I want you to find the angle theta of this vector. Find the angle. So the first thing you should do is you should compute the magnitude. So the magnitude, <coughs> the magnitude of this is what? It's equal to 2, okay, because that's the square root of 1 plus the square, the square root of 1 squared plus the, squ plus the square root of 3 squared. Okay, that's hard to say. This, let's write it like this. The square root of 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. The square root of 3 squared is 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of that is 2. Excellent. So then, a unit vector in the direction of w is uh, this one. It is half square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so then what that's, t what that's telling you is it's telling you two things. It's telling you that the cosine of theta is one half, for example, and it is also telling you that the sine of theta is what? The square root of three over two. So either one of these 
should be able to tell you the identity of theta. What is theta? Pi over 3. Good. All right, so incidentally, in this class, we're always going to be talking about radians, okay? Always assume that we're talking about radians unless for some strange reason we need to use degrees, which is basically never, okay? So then degrees are for weenies. <coughs> Okay, so any question about this example? Okay, good. Okay, now just a bit of notation. <coughs> These are the standard basis vectors. Okay, so then now, on the plane, that is to say for two-dimensional vectors, we have some standard notation. So this is pronounced I hat, right? That's a lowercase i with a pointy hat on top of it. Okay, in coordinates, in coordinates, what are its coordinates? So this is something that you may or may not have been exposed to. So i is pointing parallel to what axis? The x-axis, right? So it's 1, 0. Okay, so it, it is the unit vector which is pointing in the x direction. Okay, so then j hat. So, this is on the plane, so there's just two directions, the x direction and the y direction. So then j is probably parallel to what? The y axis. And so what are probably its coordinates? 0, 1. Very good. Okay, so then now... <coughs> The re this notation is very common, so we'll just go over it, get accustomed to it. So notice that AB, AB can be written like this. So it can be written as A0 plus 0B. Right, that's not a very fantastic uh, thing to say. So then now, I could factor out A out of this and say that this is A multiplied by 1, 0 plus b multiplied by 0, 1. But just now I've introduced new names for 1, 0 and 0, 1. What is the name for 1, 0? i hat. So this is a i hat. And this one is, is b. And then what's the name of this one? j hat. OK, so then now, just another matter of notation and convention. These hats right here, the, f the physics book that you that is currently used uh, at UTD and in several other more recent physics books, these hats, when you're dealing with vectors, these pointy hats mean uh, they signify that such a vector is a unit vector. Okay, so then you, sh you feel free to use a hat for any vector that is this kind of hat, a pointy hat, uh, if the vector you're talking about is a unit vector. Okay, so any question about this? So on the plane, there's two directions. Okay, and for that we have these two names, the I and J. Okay, so in space, how many directions are there? Three directions, right? In space, there's three directions, so now there's going to be three uh, unit vectors. So I, what do you think will be the coordinates of I? One, zero, zero. Okay, J, what do you think? 0, 1, 0, and K, 0, 0, 1. So analogous things apply to these, right? I can take some vector ABC and then say it's A0, 0, plus 0, B0, plus 0, 0, C, and then factor out A, B, and C, and then say that it's actually AI plus BJ plus CK, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then what this, what this is telling you is that there are multiple notations for me to write down vectors, and you're going, to be af have to, you're going to have to be able to convert freely in between all of them. Okay? So any question about this? This is really just a matter of notation. Okay, so then now we need to introduce a new uh, vocabulary word. So this is going to be called parallel. <coughs> Okay, so then now, consider these two vectors, and by, by vector I'm using the standard abuse to mean that actually I'm talking about a, uh, 
a directed line segment. Okay, so I'm not even going to indicate the origin. <coughs> okay, now, make a copy. Make it red. And make another one of these. Okay, so then there's three vectors on the page. Okay, none of them are identical. Well, there's three directed line segments. None of them are identical. <coughs> so then now, mm, there's a pair of vectors on the page which is parallel. Okay, what pair of vectors is parallel? The blue and the green one. So what does this word mean, parallel? as far as like human human reckoning is concerned pointing in the same direction pointing in the same direction but now what if what if i do this what if i take this one and make another copy of it and i make it this color and then i edit it just a little bit oop not that one i want to do this mm, now so that sort of muddies the waters a little bit Okay, so then pretty much everyone agrees that the blue and the green vector are parallel. How about the blue and the magenta vector? Ah, so then they're still they are still parallel. They are still parallel according to the mathematical reckoning. Okay, but more specifically, they are what he said anti-parallel, which means that they are uh, they could be superimposed on top of each other but they're pointing in the opposite direction. So then these, these vectors, these two, are parallel. <coughs> so then now, the blue one is parallel to the green one. Is the green one parallel to the blue one? Yes, right? It's a symmetric operation. So how about uh, these two? These two are parallel also parallel, but more specifically, they're, they're anti-parallel. Okay, now how about these? They're, they're not perpendicular. Right? So then let, let, me, let me just fix this real quick so that there's no, no confusion about that. Okay, so then I'm trying to draw a vector which is obviously not at a right angle to the other ones. Okay, now, what about the green and the red one? Are they parallel? Are they anti-parallel? No. Okay. Okay, so these are just sort of like human reckonings. Okay, so now we need a mathematical reckoning of what it means for vectors to be parallel. Okay, <coughs> so then, this is what it means to be parallel. So given two vectors u... and v. So given u and v, these vectors, vectors, are parallel if there exists a constant c such that u is equal to cv. So then now, this constant, this constant, at least according to uh, the book, well, so then now, right here, these need to be non-zero. So now, these are parallel. Now, the, it doesn't say anything about positive or negative, the constant C, right? So then that's, that is to say that uh, in the picture above, Right, the blue vector and the and the magenta vector, they're not pointing in the same direction, but they nevertheless are parallel because I can obtain the magenta vector from the blue one by multiplying by a negative constant. Okay, so then so to be specific, in a specific case, if C is less than zero, this is often called as anti-parallel. 
Okay, so any question about this? Parallel and anti-parallel. <coughs> okay, so as an example, I could give you a vector u, just something really simple like uh, 5, 7, and then maybe another vector v, which is something fantastic like 10, 14. So, are u and v parallel? If they are parallel, you need to demonstrate this for me. That is to say that you need to compute the constant which demonstrates that they are, in fact, parallel. So what is this constant? 2, right? So how do you write it? So the question is, is are they parallel? Okay, so then what can I write? So on some of these, it's just obvious, right? V is equal to how much u? to u, right? I have a feeling, just because of my past experience with this course, that probably about 20% of you wrote it the other way, that u is equal to 2v. So check your paper and see if you did that, and please don't do it on the quiz. So then, as another example, as another example, how about we take u is 5, 7 again, and I'll take another, I'll take v, and say that now it's equal to how about 10, uh, 10, 7. So now, are they parallel? Ah, but you need to demonstrate this for me. You telling me no, you can't just say no, trust me. No, that's not going to happen. You're going to have to demonstrate it for me. So how do you demonstrate it? Okay, so then this is the way you would demonstrate it. So let's check uh, v is, well, we'll do u is cv. It doesn't even matter. So u is cv. So then now, I have, this is one equation. This is one equation. But these vectors are of what dimension? 2, right? So this is one vector equation, but really it's two scalar equations. Two, like when you took college algebra, this is like two scalar equations. So what this is saying, what this is saying is that we should be able to, we're checking to see if we can solve the following equation. 5 is equal to 10c, and also what? 7 is equal to 7c. Okay, so this is a system of equations, and we want to know whether or not this system of equations has a solution. So according to the first equation, what is the solution for C? C is one-half according to the first equation. According to the second equation, what is the solution for C? It's, it's one. Can C, a constant scalar, simultaneously be equal to one-half and one? No, and therefore there is only one conclusion. And what is that conclusion? There is no solution, and therefore these vectors are not parallel. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, this is how you demonstrate this. So then, if you just... <laughs> so understand that this is the kind of answer that is, that is required and requested on, the, on quizzes and exams. You cannot just say, yes, they're parallel, no, right? You will receive no credit for yes and no answers. Okay, good. <coughs> okay, so any questions before we move on? Okay, now, we're dealing with the algebra of vectors. Okay, and the, understand the context. So the way Calculus 1 worked is for several years of your life, we built up this thing called arithmetic, and then on top of it, we, we developed algebra, and all algebra is, it's a symbolic way to deal with arith arithmetic, and then you solve equations, and blah, 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 blah. So then all that calculus is, all that calculus is, is you take a notion, a machinery that allows you to talk about infinitely many operations, and you add this to the notion of algebra that you had, and the result is calculus one. Right? And that machinery that tells you about infinitely many operations in Calculus 1 is called limit, unless you took a non-standard calculus, and th in that case it was called an infinitesimal. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're building up the algebra of vectors 
And then in a few lectures, we're going to add to it limit, and we're going to, as a result, deal with calculus two. Now, we've talked about how to take, uh, what we've talked about what a vector is. And then we said, now, you can take two vectors, you can add them together and get a third vector. Wonderful. We said, you can take a vector and a scalar, you can combine them with multiplication and obtain another vector. Great. So what's something that you can do that we've talked about, uh, that we have not talked about, that you can do with two numbers that we haven't described how to do with two vectors? So what's something you can do with two numbers? You can add them, but we already talked about that with vectors. And subtract, right? Add and subtract. We already covered that with the parallelogram. What's something you can do with numbers that we haven't talked about with vectors yet? Multiply and divide is something even more mysterious that we won't even talk about in this class. Okay, so in particular, product. Okay, you can compute the product of numbers. Okay, so then now we're going to talk about computing the product of vectors. Okay, now this, this is where some things are going to start to get weird. So this is section 11.3. Okay, and this is called the dot product. Okay, and this, this author calls it the dot product due to historical anomalies and probably as a, you know, paying tribute to the physics department. Not really. Mathematicians don't call this the dot product. Okay, so then more, more usually a mathematician would call this the scalar product. And that is how I will pronounce it during lecture. Okay, so I'm not going to call it the dot product. The dot product just happens to be the notation that you use to write it down. Like you write plus to write addition. To write this product, we will write a dot. Okay, but I'm going to call it the scalar, scalar product. For those of you that are interested in mathematics and you go on, it will not even be called the scalar product half the time. Half the time it will be called the inner product or the interior product. Okay, so then the scalar product. <coughs> So then, here it is, <coughs> the definition. So given u is a, b, and another vector v is c, d, <coughs> the scalar product of u and v is u dot v is denoted in that way and that's the reason why the book calls it the dot product is because of that big dot <coughs> and incidentally you cannot it is not acceptable for you to write that you like you could do that in in calculus one right you could write x y and that's understood to be the product of x and y well, you cannot do that here. If you don't write the dot, you will be emphatically incorrect. <coughs> okay, so u dot v is, by definition, you take the first coordinates of the two vectors, right, a and c, and then you multiply them as scalars, a, c, and then add to it, you take the second coordinates of the vectors, b and d, and you multiply them as scalars, b, d. Okay, so then now, this is truly bizarre. I want, to Im I want to impress upon you how bizarre this is. Okay, now, you took two vectors okay, just minutes ago. We added them together and got what kind of thing? A vector. Okay. Then, just minutes ago, we took a vector and a scalar and got what kind of thing? And we multiplied them together and got what kind of thing? A vector. So, in a sense, the scalar upgraded to a vector, sort of? Now, what's happening here, we took two vectors, u and v, on the left-hand side, combined them with this product we're calling the scalar product, and got what thing on the right-hand side? A scalar. Incidentally, that's why I call it, the, one of the reasons why I'm going to call it the scalar product. Because in your computations, I promise you that if you write that the scalar product of two vectors is equal to a vector, the scalar product equal to a vector, then you will just receive a zero for that question because you have emphatically lost the point. Okay? The scalar product of two vectors is a scalar. 
Okay, so for example, <coughs> scalar product of two vectors. So how about u is u is one two and v is three four. Please compute the scalar product of u and v. <coughs> So it should be 3 plus 8, which is 11. Okay, so any question about this one? Okay, now I'd like to give you another example. So that's example 1, example 2. U is again 1, 2. And now how about V is equal to negative 2, 1? Please compute the scalar product. Okay, so then what do you get? So you get negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. Now, there should be some red lights going off in your head right here. Okay, so why? So let's think about this. If I have two numbers in calculus 1, scalars, and I can A and B, scalars A and B, and I compute their product, AB, and that product is equal to 0, what is certainly true? One of them was 0, right, in calculus 1. If you compute the product of two scalars A and B and the product is 0, either A was 0 or B was 0. There is no other possibility in the universe. Now, here on this example, U and V, was either one of them the zero vector? No, neither one of them was the zero vector. In fact, I chose coordinates so that none of the coordinate positions was zero, right? The U had coordinates 1, 2, and V had coordinates negative 2, 1. There are no zeros showing up in there anywhere, but nevertheless, we computed their product, and the product was zero. Okay, I want you to understand that this is very significant because this shows you part of the degeneracy of this product as compared to the to the product for calculus one, right? You had this assurance in calculus one that if you had the product of things and the product was zero, surely one of them was zero, but not now, not now. If I give you two vectors and their product was zero, that does not mean one of them was zero. Okay, so any questions about this? Okay, so then that brings up an important geometric point, and the geometric point that we need to talk about <coughs> Well, before I do that, actually, I'm just going to make a passing comment, and that is this, that the scalar product commutes, and I'll just let you <coughs> look this up. So then what, it, what do I mean by this? Commutes is sort of a mathematician's word. What does that mean? That u dot v is equal to what? v dot u. Okay, so this, right, that means it doesn't matter if you do which order you do the product in, right? This is like left sock and right sock. doesn't matter if you put on the left sock first or the right sock first, whatever you like. Okay, this is not, it's not like pants and underwear. Pants and underwear matters what order you put them on in. So the reason why I'm going to say this is because this is just one of two products we're going to consider. This product doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. The next product that we're going to talk about in the coming lectures, the product emphatically does matter. So any question about this? Okay, finally, I also want to make a note. Okay, and that is this. So if we have that u is equal to a, b, if u is equal, equal to a, b, then I would like to compute directly what is u dot u, u scalar product u. So what would that be? a squared plus b squared, good. But now I'd like to write something that is a little bit strange, right? A strange way to write this would be like this. The square root of a squared plus b squared squared, right? Why would you go through that algebraic hurdle? Okay, the reason is because as related to u, what is the square root of a squared plus b squared? The length of u, 
right? The length of u. So this is equal to the length of u squared. Okay, this behaves th in this way, in this way, this, sc this scalar product is similar to the Calculus 1 product. That is to say that if you have two, if you have a number in Calculus 1, x, and you compute xx, well, xx is equal to the absolute value of x squared. Of course, it's also just equal to x squared because you can drop the absolute value in that case. Okay, so in this way, the product that we're talking about right now is like the product that you were using in Calculus 1. But in this way, according to the previous example, it is not like the product you were using in Calculus 1. Okay, so then what is the geometry of this product? <coughs> okay, so then it is this. This is about the angle between vectors. So that is to say, if I was to draw a coordinate system, a coordinate system, and two vectors, u and v, call this one v, and this <coughs> u, Then, in between these two vectors is some angle theta. Okay, now, <coughs> in between these two vectors is some angle theta. Now, what we want to do is we want to demonstrate, want to demonstrate that the, the scalar product has something to do with the angle between these vectors. Okay. So, <coughs> now... The sum of u and v, where does it lie? Right, if I was to draw it. Remember, how, wh when you're dealing with vectors and sum graphically, where does the sum fall? A diagonal, right? This diagonal. Right, does everyone see, can you see that me moving that point? It's a little small. There's a diagonal right there. Okay, but now, what about the difference? v minus u, where, were it, where will it fall? The other diagonal. Okay, so then now I'll draw the other diagonal in what color? How about magenta? So it will look something like this. So like this. Now if I draw some arrowheads, right, from here, here, to here, this can be V minus U. Okay. So then now, I can take this triangle, make a copy of it, because it is a triangle. Oops. Okay, now, I can compute the magnitudes of each, of each one of these sides. Let's undo that. Okay, so then... Now I can say this has length that, this one has length that, and this one has length that. Okay, now this is where trigonometry comes in. This is where trigonometry comes in, stuff that you had to know before you got in this class. So you know, you know the three lengths of a triangle. You know the three lengths of a triangle, and you know this angle. So what are some things that you know that relate the lengths of triangles and angles and things like that? Okay, I'm looking for something that starts with L. Close. Law of cosines. Okay, good. So then the law of cosines, <coughs> the law of cosines says the following. According to the law of cosines, The law of cosine says that the length of v minus u, the length of v minus u squared, right? If this was, if theta, if theta was a right angle, if it was, if it was pi over 2, then v minus u would be the hypotenuse of a triangle, right? It would be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. If that was the case, then it would be, it would be v squared plus u squared. Right? And I could end it here if I knew that theta was uh, a right angle. But it's not. 
and therefore I have to I have to correct this statement with the law of cosines correction and I have to say minus minus the length of V times the length of U times the cosine of the angle between V and U. Uh, twice that, right? Okay, <coughs> so then this little bit that I'm underlining in green, that's the that bit is the law of cosines. The, the part that I'm underlining in red, right, that's the Pythagorean theorem. If the angle theta was a right angle, then we would just need the red part. But since it's not a right angle, we need the green part for the law of cosines. <coughs> Almost out of time here. So then now what I want to do, now what I want to do, is I want to look at the following. I want to make a notice here. So this part will help you on the homework watching this computation. Let's consider V minus U squared. So according to a previous remark that I made, I know that V minus U, well, that's a vector, and the length of a vector squared, that's related to the scalar product somehow. So what was it on the previous page? I said something something is equal to the length of U squared. What? Okay, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, for this, right? U dot U is the length of U squared. So then, the V minus... My computer's going crazy. Oh, it died. Okay, well we're out of time anyway. So I'll see you on uh, see you on Tuesday. <coughs> this piece of yes. Yes. Yes, it should be u squared. If I that is really aggravating. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> <laughs>